Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 294 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Zafron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How's it going today, Richard? Hey, Seth. It's uh, going well. Watching the Mythic Invitational as we speak right now. Oh uh, yeah, that uh, that is something we will talk about today. The Mythic Invitational should have been over by now, but there were some issues, I would say, with uh, the coverage this weekend in the tournament. But we'll get to that in a minute. Before we do, we have another co-host in Krim. What's up this fine Monday, Krim? Good morning, Seth. The air is miserable. Everything else is still okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Uh, yes. Yeah. So hopefully things are, are, are things any better than last week? Before we get into it all, like, is your air any better? Is it still the, like, crazy orange skies and toxicness? Is it improved at all on the West Coast where you guys are? It's not orange, but I'll tell you right now that the, the smoke is definitely there. Yeah, orange is actually better. <laughs> orange means <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the pollution is up high and it's, like, messing with the sun and it's not down low. So on the day it was actually orange, the air was not too bad. Uh, but it's been actually quite bad this weekend. There's like, you know, like cars parked outside. There's like ash covering them. Um, yep. Wow. So, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So we just huddle inside and try to breathe clean air. <laughs> Jeez. Well, hopefully, uh, things get better out there soon. That is, that is crazy. But anyway, today we have three main topics. We're going to start with Mythic Invitational. Slasha coverage, etc. Kind of what went down this weekend at the Mythic Invitational. Follow it up by a new secret layer announcement, and we still have more Zendikar Rising cards to get to. We had many of them when we podcasted last week, but spoiler season went through the middle of the week, so we still have some Zendikar Rising stuff, so we're going to get to that, and then answer your fish mail at the end of the podcast. So that is the overview for today. But before we get into that, a reminder that our show today is brought to you by Card Conduit. And if you've ever struggled with the hassles of buy listing your magic cards, it's a lot of work to sort them and to type them into a buy list and to ship them. It's just a huge hassle. If you want to avoid that hassle and all that time, uh, the folks over at Card Hoarder with their new service, Card Conduit, can help you out. They will take and sort, grade, and sell your magic cards. And once your shipment is processed, you'll receive the proceeds minus their fee. And right now, you can get a 10% discount by going to cardconduit.com slash goldfish. So thank you so much to Card Conduit for supporting the show today. And uh, let's talk some magic. Let's start Mythic Invitational. So did either of you guys get to watch any of the Mythic Invitational this weekend? Uh, I, I tuned in and out. Uh, I, I came in at some points, yeah. So I'm watching that's, it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is, okay, so, so obviously we're recording this Monday, noon Eastern time. The tournament was supposed to be over yesterday. It was supposed to be the second half of the top eight. Uh, we got an announcement, Richard, yesterday. What, what happened yesterday? Why is the tournament still going on, uh, Monday afternoon? All right. Let's, let's set what's, what's going on, right? So it is historic constructed. Uh, so this is the first time we've seen historic, uh, on the main stage. Um, it is the first post pandemic or during pandemic, uh, big magic event. Uh, and Wizards stumbled upon, like, one of the most stacked and greatest top eights of all time. We have, like, LSV, Seth Manfield, Matt Nass, uh, Gabriel Nassif, Luis Savato, uh, Kowalski, Yukihiro, and David Steinberg, the one, like, non-MPL uh, <laughs> slash rivals player. But it's, like, the greatest top eight ever. Uh, so we have an uppers bracket and a lowers bracket. They went through the uppers bracket on Saturday. Uh, so Sunday was supposed to be the lowers and then the finals. And the Wizards just sends out this tweet saying, we have a problem with the broadcast. It's not being played. We'll play it at a later time. So everyone's <laughs> like, WTF, what? And then their time was Monday morning, 5 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> So uh, it's actually playing right now. Uh, we're still going through lowers bracket. We don't know the results of the tournament. But for Wizards to botch it so bad that they just give up on the broadcast is a little ridiculous. Like, this is our push into esports. It's very awkward. Um, the actual broadcast itself is pretty bad. I I think it's like some guy streaming in his basement or something. Like... uh. 
like the the quality of the stream is super low. Like uh, everything is like pixelated. The bit rate is uh, the bit rate is pretty low. Uh, Arena is super choppy. Uh, and I think they just have like the players like broadcast on Discord or something to some guy. Some guy stitches it together and then it comes out as a broadcast. The quality is super low. And I think his internet blew up or something last night, right? Or, or on Sunday, so he couldn't do it anymore. They're like, well, I guess that was it. So I, I don't know. It was a pretty janky setup and it's inexcusable, right? Like this is not you know, two weeks after the pandemic broke out. We've been in pandemic for six months, right? I watched an NFL game yesterday, right? I've watched League of Legends finals. Like everyone has carried on and has contingency plans and internet outages are a thing that you should be aware of. So to have this be our premier event is kind of sad, right? We had so long to make a proper spectator mode in arena. And had they done that, they could have broadcasted it from, you know, Watsi headquarters with high-end machines and high-end internet, and we wouldn't be here. But because we've been using janky solutions to broadcast Magic Esports, like, this is what we got. And it's sad because otherwise, I think we would have had a really good story. Uh, you know, it was Historic's first time. The meta game was okay. Uh, mostly Goblins, Sacrifice, and Saltai Midrange. Uh, but instead, we we're watching like pixelated magic cards at like 10 FPS, and then it's not even on when we want it to be on. So, so yeah. And and, and we even got a, a porn pop up earlier in the weekend, which was uh, <laughs> wait wait what? I missed so. this part. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't. It was not porn. It was, it was one of those por- like sexy singles in your area. Click here during the stream. <laughs> if you're lonely. Yeah, it popped yeah. up live on stream. There's a there's some clips floating around on Reddit. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't even notice that. I mean, there were like mic issues and things. Like, but oh, I didn't even I didn't even that guy, that poor soul that was put in this position. Um, yeah. So, man, it's hard for me to be like overly forgiving about this like i do get this stuff happens like if they i don't know there's acts of god the internet goes out at the same time while i think that's a legitimate excuse for me or crim or someone like streaming from their office in their house like stuff happens if you're a 11 billion dollar company like hasbro you would assume that If you're going to have this premiere event, you probably would have, like, a backup plan in place. Like, what happens if your guy's internet goes out or girls, whoever is, like, doing this broadcast, I I would assume you would plan for that contingency and, like, have a backup and have someone else that can run it through their internet so you can get around that issue. So it's hard for me to be, like, overly sympathetic, and I think it's partly because the (sighs) the rest of the broadcast was also just so scattershot and low quality. If it had been, like, this amazing, like... Remember last year's Mythic Invitational with like the fireworks and the WWF <laughs> announcements of players? Yeah, yeah. Now, yep, in yep. one year, we went from that to porn pop ups and canceling <laughs> streams. Like, it's really embarrassing. And Wizards kind of does it to themselves because they're the ones that started this whole like top five esport meme. Like, th- that's not us. I mean, not, we didn't say, oh, Magic's the top five. E- top five esport that was hasbro ceo saying that kind of stuff so i don't think it's unfair to hold wizards to the standard of league of legends or hearthstone or these other big games that seem to be doing fine even during this pandemic era and putting on reasonable broadcasts because wizards is the one that kind of set that expectation by saying we're a top five esport and we're going to put all this money into it and we're going to be like the next big thing in the esports world so i don't know i'm just mostly embarrassed i think (laughs) as a as a magic player and a magic fan it was just like boy an embarrassing weekend for magic esports you know when i have I, friends and family ask what i do i would not show them the stream <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to learn about magic what like no no what no um i i i do pokemon cards yeah see ya <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know i mean like i even though i i i i still feel for the whole like the whole broadcasting team right i mean there's a lot of moving parts still right i mean there, you've still got to factor in that there's like like you're trying to like get like run like 11 parties right and then have it all feed through one person so there there's there's a lot right between broadcasting team and whatnot so i i, I don't know i i still feel for the broadcasting team and whatnot. Yeah, no, no, Even hate, if, no hate on the broadcasting yeah. team. Like, you know, the people put on air, the people, like the guy who's, the guy or girl who's actually doing all of this, like they're just doing their job as best as they can. 
it's really like the structure put in place like why did wizards not have a backup plan like why do we not have spectator mode like even if it's not available for the general public just for their esports push right like magic esports has supposedly been a thing for like a year two years three years like they, they have plenty of time to update arena to make a real proper spectator mode so that they can actually broadcast properly but they haven't right so it's like these decisions that then put their employees and contractors in these awkward positions uh like they're just doing the best of what they have but you know the buck stops somewhere on the management chain right like if this is your uh, $250,000 tournament. You couldn't spend like some money <laughs> to make it like run smoothly. So, so yeah. Uh, so I think what Krim said is a really good point though. Like a hundred percent from my perspective, the casters and the people putting on the vet, they're not to blame for this. I don't have any like ill will or hard feelings. And a lot of them are like super awesome and doing a really good job. For me, it really comes down to like Wizards and Hasbro. Like these are big companies with tons of money. And when I see like Jeff Hooglin running 200 pe- person uh, people tournaments out of his basement and having like no downtime and having higher quality streams and wizards and doing this on a regular basis. It makes me think if Jeff can do that, like why can wizards not at least get to Jeff Hoogland from his basement level when they're an 11, Hasbro's an $11 billion company. Like to me that like, that's the part that's unacceptable. It's not the casters. It's not the people doing it. They're all doing the best that they can. So hundred percent, it's not on them. They're doing what they can, but boy, you would think if Hasbro was really serious about magic being an esport. They would, you know, uh, open up the faucet a little bit and uh, and give them the resources they need to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen, especially for this $250,000 Mythic Invitational. This is, like, arguably the biggest, most important tournament of the year. Like, based on last year's Mythic Invitational and, like, the amount of money they put into this, it's not like, oh, a random GP or a random, you know, SCG Open or something. This is, like, big time, maybe the most important event of the year, and to have everything just, like, go wrong and the wheels come off in such spectacular fashion, in all honesty, like, wow, 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 wow. So where do we go from here? Like, we've been talking about Magic coverage for a long time, like a decade. There's been criticisms of Magic's ability to run good streams uh, in coverage. Is this a wake-up call? Are we going to see, like, things go smoother and better in the future? Or does Wizards just not care, or Hasbro just not care, or not want to, like, put in the money to run a high-quality stream, and we're going to keep dealing with this like we have for the last 10 years? Um, I mean, like, I, I do hope that we get the spectator mode. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of it be, like, a, a lot of the reason why you know, maybe the broadcasting team has to, like, kind of go all over the place is because they're trying to stitch together multiple feeds, right? And and I, and I think that the spectator mode would be huge. Uh, that'd be great personally, but, you know, they, they do have to do something about that. But they've, they've had to do something about that. So, uh, I, I, other than that, I mean, yeah, there's, it, it's a little different, you know, in, in these pandemic times. So I don't expect like, you know, the pyrotechnics and all of that and the, you know, in person stuff. Uh, I'm willing, I can, I can sit, like, I don't mind the, you know, pixelated, the eight bitty stuff. But I, I do think that the spectator mode is something that really should be worked on because of these times. Yeah. Like, like, the fact that LSV is streaming from his living room, okay, it's pandemic, right? Understandable, right? The fact that I can't read his battlefield because it's so pixelated, right? Or like when there is a non-English speaker playing, like say a Japanese player, their cards are all in Japanese. Like I can't read them. Like I don't know what the hell's going on, right? So that I that love is, foreign magic cards. That's inexcusable. So. That feels like I'm playing Ace Crim. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? <laughs> no one should. No one should. You know, have to sit through that experience. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Wait, playing against me or <laughs> Yeah, playing against Grim and his uh troll foreign cards that are like misprinted, so like you don't even know what they do. Yeah. Uh, Look, that 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 is a feature. Okay, I'll let you know that right now. <laughs> that is a feature. Uh so it's like yeah, like give a spectator mode. I we thought things were on the up and up with uh the last year's Mythic Invitational. We're like, oh wow, this is like beyond expectation. But then we're back to good old Watsy uh, with this Mythic Invitational. So I'm not sure because I feel like they'll just sweep it under the rug. I feel like, you know, when the pandemic is over, they'll go back to 
basically a venue that does everything for them, right? Like at PAX, I'm assuming someone else handles the internet and they have backup internet and everything, right? So that that doesn't happen. So they'll just go back and then, you know, it's like not wearing your seatbelt or something, right? It's like most of the time you don't get in an accident, no one notices until you get in an accident and then you're not wearing a seatbelt, right? So when we go back to normal times, like Watsy will just skirt by with these shortcuts. So I, I feel like nothing's really gonna change. I mean, like, spectator mode is just the bare minimum right can we even replay games from bugs like what if a game crashes what happens right it will happen eventually uh what's going to happen at that point right they should be able to replay games up to a crash point or or something like that but i i don't know i don't think wizards has priority on esports i think they just put enough out to put esports in their marketing to investors and, and other things and sponsors and then kind of that's it so i i'm still not convinced that the higher ups at hasbro know what esport means like i, I think <laughs> I, I, I i'm not sure that they actually know what that means i think they just think that like when people like me and cram and whatnot stream on twitch i think like that's what they're referring to a lot of the time is just like having a presence on twitch rather than like being legitimate esport i think the other kids are have you looked at all at like the views of like big events on the magic twitch stream like over the weekend i was noticing a mythic invitational at its peak this weekend right now it's at like 12k as we're recording this for the finals which makes a little sense with the date getting switched and i think it's pre-recorded now so but the most they hit this weekend was 25k and the pt finals the last big tournament they did like a month or two ago was 17k and even going back through last year where we had like uh the mythic championships there's a few that are like ridiculously huge spikes where they had like that embedded views advertising thing but the paper ones were like 25k 28k and if you jump back to the pre-arena era like pro tour rivals of Vixenlon. 46k pro tour amic at 46k pro tour 25th anniversary 31k uh like somehow somehow we put out arena and we become an esport and we're getting like half the amount of views at our premier tournaments than we were getting before arena was a thing like that is really scary to me like what what do you think is going on with that are people just not interested in watching magic is the game going in a bad direction is it the meta is it the coverage like why 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 is this mythic invitational getting half the views as a random modern pro tour from like three years ago before arena and all this stuff i feel magic is not very watchable and coverage is not helping so i think back in the day you had nothing to do right it was like a new set came out like unless it was those three hours in which you were at your lgs you kind of had nothing to do so you would watch people play magic nowadays like why watch historic I can just literally play it right now, right? Uh, and I think Magic is one of those games where it's more fun to play than to watch. So what you basically do is go see your favorite pro, find their deck list, copy it, and then go play rather than watch the event. So I think part of it is arena and part of it is just people are playing. Now, I wonder if uh, while these events are going on, there's a spike in activity on arena. I, like, that's something only wizards would know, but I wonder if people see like, Hey, Historic is happening. Uh, that's a cool Dreadhor Arcanist deck. I'm just going to go play it right now and then turn off the stream and go play it, right? I wonder if that's what's happening. Because before you had like have nothing to do. So you're like, oh, I'll just watch the stream. <laughs> I, I think that might be true to some extent. I know for me, especially with the old school Pro Tours where the first part was limited, almost every Pro Tour, I would sit down to like watch the limited rounds and it would make me fire up a draft. Like, I, I don't draft that regularly. I mostly play Constructed. But watching the Pro Tour draft, I'd be like, huh, that actually, that looks kind of fun. Like, that's a cool deck. Maybe I should drop into a, uh, jump into a draft. So I'm sure there's other people that are like that, that see a cool deck or a cool synergy and are like, okay, like, that's all I needed. Let me go, like, play Magic now rather than watching. So that is a, an interesting facet of all this, I think. I I, I still feel like there's, there's a lot of things like also at play right i mean th this i don't think it's directly caused by one thing i do think that yeah the the meta has also made people feel weird about magic there is a lot of magic now uh like a lot of it so there, like you know maybe maybe like richard had mentioned back then there was nothing to do so you would just watch some some stuff but yeah like i i, I do think you know th that magic probably did, like hurt itself a little bit with the meta game and the way the, the cards played out in the last like year or two 
And then I also do think that, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the, the lack of spectator mode does make it weird, right? <sighs> yeah. So I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like it, for me, it's hard to be hopeful about coverage going forward. Like I want to be hopeful. I want to think that after this weekend, it's going to be like a big shift and the money is going to flow and the streams are going to be super legit. And I definitely understand that it is COVID time. And I'm sure that putting on this event was more complicated than the events they were used to putting on for the past, like however many years because uh, of people being in different places and the workflow is different and all that. So I do get that aspect, but boy, I don't know. Like I, I'm a little nervous about that. And I also worry, like we already got GPs gone. We're already down to like wizards just kind of, randomly doing events partly because of uh covid but in part because they cut gp coverage uh like a year ago now so uh, with these numbers not being good and with these disasters do you think there's any risk that wizards are just like you know screw it we're done with this like it's not worth the ha- like every whenever we try to do a tournament not many people watch it and then everyone gets mad about something and yells at us because we messed something up like at what point do they just be like okay we're done with this all together i hope not <laughs> at all. I hope they aren't done with it because I think they should just what they need to do is more so just tighten things up rather than just give up on it, right? So like I I, I do think that yes, uh, I mean <laughs> let's not lie here. We we know how much the magic community also likes <laughs> digging into things. <laughs> so a, a little more so than, than others. Supportive, constructive criticism. We, yeah. We're oh, so yes, understanding. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I think of MTG Twitter and I think of MTG like community, they, they're always just jumping with excitement to support. <laughs> but, but like, I, I, I think that I hope Wizards doesn't like get discouraged by this because I think the issue is that there is something there for them, uh, especially in, in these like COVID times. I just think they need to tighten the ship up and that's it. Yeah. I, I I think they will continue to focus on these premier events. It's, it's kind of like one of the carrots that maybe they're not happy to support, but they will. Like kind of like uh, Legacy or something where it's a place to play your cards forever, but play standard, please. Right? Like they don't care too much about esports. Other like their focus is casual players, right? Their focus is kitchen table players, commander players, and things like that because they're easy to appease, right? Like if your game is not balanced, no one cares. It's super casual, right? So, but they have to spend all this time uh, balancing the game, making it fair, stuff like that for these super entrenched crowds so that the image of magic is good, right? So that there is this like high level place that you can aspire to and, and kind of keep the dream alive and things like that. So they have to keep it going. But... Like, magic is just not very viewable, right? Like, you know, it takes me maybe an hour or two to catch up to the meta. Like, I had not played Historic previously, so there are cards that appear on screen that I'm not... You know, when I see a red cap... Red cap... Red melee... What's that one red spell? Red Red cap melee? melee. Red cap melee. Like, I don't recognize the art, so I don't know what that is for, like, at least, like, 20 minutes until someone plays it. They're like, oh, that's that card, right? And even then, I know that card exists, right? So I'm already able to make that connection super fast. Like, I can imagine, like, it's just way worse if you don't know anything about anything, right? You sit down, you're like, what the heck's going on? There's no fancy graphics or anything. You're just confused. So... They do need to keep innovating the broadcast so that new players or returning players can understand what's going on without investing, you know, like eight hours so that you you actually run through all the cards. Uh, So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough. And I thought they were getting there with Mythic Invitational 1. Hopefully they return to... You kind of knew because it's such a big tournament, they put a lot of money into the broadcast itself. I feel like they scale that back. They're like, ah, oh, we did it. And then, okay, let's just go back to our normal budget. I feel like they need to keep doing it. And they need to keep the embeds going or whatever to make sure magic is pinned at the top of Twitch. So that when people stumble into Twitch, they see that magic is on top and it's not buried under, you know, eight other games or something like that, right? So, or like yeah, I, I, think they, I think they go all in. <laughs> yeah. I think they go all in. Like, they, they feel very much, like, it feels very much so like, Kind of like, ah, oh, we want to kind of do it, but a little wishy-washy. But, like, if you want it to be an eSport, you have to go all in. 
Yeah. Yeah, I I would definitely agree with that. And I mean, I hope they do. I would miss I already miss the amount of coverage we had before. Like some of my fondest memories are like the golden era of legacy. Watching SCG like 10 years ago and they did legacy every weekend. I used to watch so much magic. I used to watch most GPs unless the meta was in a game where uh in a place where I just wasn't interested in it, but I would actually like really try to watch tournaments almost every weekend, at least some of them. Uh and now it's just uh, they're few and far between the official ones that do happen. The quality has been issues. So I hope that Wizards does double down on uh, on having more tournaments and improving the quality of the broadcast, because I do think it is important. Like the casual players, it's not important to them, but I think you do need that dream to remain alive uh, for the more like competitive and enfranchised crowd. And without having streams that are watchable and like an OP system where you feel like you can qualify and get there eventually. Like, I think a lot of that falls apart. And I think it is, even though the like spike crowd is a small percentage of the game, it is a really active and enfranchised part of the game. Uh, so I, I do feel like it's worth it. I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see what happens, but uh, it was not a, not a great weekend <laughs> as far as magic coverage was concerned. You, you need to appeal I, to everyone who thinks they're a spike, but not actually a spike, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like it, it's true, right? You watch someone like pull off some like crazy play, you're like, I, you know, that's so amazing. I could do that. Let's go. Right. Like that's pretty much how all the other games work. Like you, you watch people play video games. You're like, oh, that's so cool. I want to go do that too. And then you go and then that's, that's literally the reason why all these esports exist, right? Is it advertising for the game? So you go play the game, right? Well, so. the, the issue though is, is also like, as I had mentioned this, it doesn't, I don't feel like I've had to watch a lot of the mythic invitate, like the, the mythic championships, mostly because the patterns of play on their own, just like they're not like, oh, that's so sick. They doubled their mana and like drew their whole deck. <laughs> that's so like sick. Mux, Mux has put six <laughs> goblins into play and they won on turn three. Wow, that was cool. I, I, you I only say that because you're jaded. If you were a new player <laughs> and you saw someone dump a turn two Muxus and like dump three more See, goblins, you'd be like, wow, amazing, right? I, d- I do. I actually do think Muxus is more fun to watch than it is to play against. Uh, because it's like you, you get to see that, right? Them spin the wheel. Now, if I were playing against it, it's miserable. Watching it, I'm okay. I actually <laughs> think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, but, but like, like, I, I mean, like, that's not my, I guess like historic so far, I've actually enjoyed the historic gameplay. Uh, more so the standard portion of it, which is their main driving. Cause like historic's still a new format, right? But their main driving format, which is standard, it's like very nice. They double their mana, they draw all their cards, or everything's now an elk. It's your like, right? that, that's it's like, it's like watching football and someone takes a huge hit, right? Everyone is cheering. No one's like, that guy's spine is like jacked for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> six months, right? Like I feel like that's not the common reaction unless you're like an actual football player. You're like, oh man, that guy just got wrecked. Everyone's like, oh yeah, what a huge hit. Oh my God, right? <laughs> Muxus, four cards, yeah. I, <laughs> Look at that high joint traces. <laughs> 10, 10. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point, and I will say, despite all the issues with the stream, they actually had some really interesting matches. Like, Muxus, while I agree it's not fun to play against, and I'm not sure how healthy the deck is for the format, it is intriguing to watch people, like, spin it and, like, maybe whiff, maybe win the game. And even I think the Sacrifice deck is similar. It doesn't have that spectacular play, but good lord, there were some just amazing matches that Nassif played over the weekend with the Sacrifice deck that were just, like, so close and so intricate and, like, so much going on. So I actually thought that the gameplay itself was really entertaining the parts of it that i've saw at least yeah yeah like for this this specific tournament with historic i do think i mean like also gabriel nasif is like playing magic out of his mind right now like that, that was just like oh, okay that is that is wild that is just they're just like great games of magic right like and 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 i i can get behind that uh as i had mentioned like the gameplay this weekend is was actually fun and maybe standard will be better like we're getting zendikar rising in a couple of days releasing digitally the next tournaments we're going to have the big ones that are going to be broadcast are going to be standard with zendikar rising maybe that fixes some of the like the mana doubling hydride crosses elk issues that we've had for the past year like nah we'll just I, find a new problem I, to complain about <laughs> <laughs> see see like 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 i i do like there is a there's a line right i mean i know that people will just find something new to complain about but i but i genuinely do feel like 
the last two years has been a problem, right? Like, so, so anything right now almost feels better. And at least, I mean, I can't say what the next format is. And I, you know, maybe I'm slightly missing something, but I, I just, I feel like this format's just going to be some of the most fun. I know that everybody is complaining about Uro and Uro on its own is a very problematic card, but you know, like I still think it'll be a great format. Moving, moving into Zendikar. I mean, at least the mana doublers are gone, and the ramp yes. is like been powered down to some extent, and like the Crosses style card draw finishers seem to be missing. So while I don't know if I'd go as far as to say I think Zendikar Rising Standard will be great, like I hope that it is, and we'll see. I think it's definitely going to be better than it was. Like it, it almost has to be. Like uh, it's hard for me to imagine it can't, it can't a way be for worse, it to right? not, you guys not be so better than we, we shouldn't were. jinx. We shouldn't jinx it. Did you forget Wait, companions that came and went? <laughs> uh, I, you're and we, talking to me who enjoyed companions. At least, that is at true. least the companions of Zendikar Rising are just lands. So maybe they'll be a little less, you know, miserable. But I think the cards everyone's going to play in every deck from the set are going to be the land cycles, so maybe that'll be fine-ish? I always had a question in my mind. You know how, like, nowadays we have, like, Twitter and Reddit and all those things, and we look back on the older formats, like, you know, with uh, with fond memories? I'm, I'm curious what Nefalia Drown Yard Standard would look like in today's atmosphere. And I would, I, I love I, Nefalia Drown Yard I, I think we're going to see it. That was so fun. <laughs> You, did you you really did like it? I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was and fine, like, but I, I can see why people do not like it, right? Mirrors take 8 million years. If you're playing anything but a Drown Yard deck, you can't do anything because the other person's deck is just literally all answers and like nothing is, is needed to win the game but the Drown Yard. And when they win, they don't even win. It takes them like 8 million years. Kind of like... Uh, Someone's favorite infinite looping t- turn take, uh, <laughs> extra turn yeah. taking card, yeah. right? So I, I, I think that that deck would have generated hey, a Nexus ton is, of Nexus salt, isn't... a ton of salt in today's environment. And I feel we may be heading there with our new lands. So we'll Nexus see. is not, not, not Nefalia Drown Yard. Nefalia totally Drown Yard was actually fun. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, it's no. totally, it's the I... same play pattern. It's the same play I... pattern. I also enjoyed playing Drown Yard. Like, I loved playing the Sphinx's Rev deck back then. That was, like, one of... The, that was, like, the main deck I played. Not for, like, content or anything, but just, like, to grind with. And I love... People don't know that about me, but I actually love playing control decks. I just don't do it because I think it's bad for, like, coverage and or bad for, like, content. People don't seem to like them, so I don't do it. But, but I love playing control decks, so I agree that that was a really sweet deck. At the same time, in a world of the Magic Arena subreddit, where people, like, just absolutely loathe Drago-style control decks, I think there would be bannings to that deck today. Like, I think Sphinx's Rav or Drown Yard, or, like, something would happen because there would just be so many complaints from, like, the Spike players, whatever, that's fine. Like, that's an uh, entertaining mirror match, even, like, to play uh, if you're, like, two Spiky-style players. But the, like, semi-competitive and casual players, whoo, they would not be happy with Drown Yard Control being the best deck in the format. Not not even a little. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, that, sure, right? Like, I mean, we, we talked about that, right, with, like, Jace the Mind sculpture probably wouldn't made wouldn't have made it to the month before like banning right uh like but but i don't know i mean i guess those times were just a little bit different too i mean like you could yeah. actually leverage card advantage um <laughs> and like people would concede to that uh and and, and yeah probably something would have gone with the blue white deck also but i don't know i i i would like to return to those times and it looks like we might be headed there right where where card advantage will matter and the format looks like it's moving into a like a, a healthier direction. <laughs> Card advantage. I don't know if that's so twenty sixteen. <laughs> we're, we're tempo now, Krim. It's all about crippling I, plays. <laughs> it's a tempo so that your card advantage doesn't matter. Like, do games it, it, ever end with people without a gas? <laughs> I mean, we sure hope so. <laughs> it's also important that, to keep in mind that Crim's idea of a healthy format is like counterbalance, spin my top, spin Grixis my top. versus S. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. <laughs> Play a Narset, no, like, wheel. <laughs> like, I, I, I do think that there should be an aggro deck, right? I used to, like, hate red deck and, like, think that was miserable to play against. But, like, I, I miss that. I miss that so much. Like, please, Goblin, guide me on turn one. Right? Like, I... <laughs> We got Wayward Guide Beast, Grim. It's happening. Mono oh, Red yes. Is back. Yes, Mono Red is back because of that card. That is why. All right. 
Uh, all right. Well, we've we've talked about tournaments for a while. We should probably move forward and uh, hit our other topic. So, any final thoughts, tournaments, all that stuff we've been talking about before we move on? Uh, just once again, really do hope Wizards just doubles down on going esports and and like really commits to it, and just that's it, really. I think they should embrace it and actually yeah. like make a little. Well, not only embrace uh, esports, but maybe just embrace like the debacle of the past streams. Like, do a little meme video of like the guy peeing in the background. I mean, that was great. Corn pop the, up. The, wait, wait, there's like, a guy peeing a, in the background. Oh, I missed the. Yeah, lot that, of and you know what the funniest thing is that was a <laughs> the background. Somebody of that I've actually played like that. Not the person that's peeing, but Alan. Alan Wu is. <laughs> yeah, someone was it is, playing. It is funny. And it was just in their house, obviously, and their roommate, you can see down the hallway, like, goes into the bathroom and just, like, pees with the door open, and you watch them, and the commentary team, I think it was Paul and Marshall, it was Paul, yeah. started, That's like, so playing, good. kind of, like, announcing the guy peeing, almost, like, <laughs> along with the game. That's, it, it was so good, like, I, I love that, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, uh, I, I shouldn't watch, I, I only, I only watched parts of, uh, day two and uh, the top eight, I, I missed some epic moments, someone, uh, let me just put a montage of this together, so we remember 2020, yeah. the year of Magic Ta- Esports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, next thing to hit on, just super quick. We were supposed to get a new Secret Lair announcement yesterday. It got delayed along with the stream, but then it got put up on the site accidentally for a couple minutes, and then they took it down, and then they officially announced it today. Uh, Showcase Zendikar Revisited. Five cards. Choose foil, non-foil. Uh, Animation Angel, Royal Elemental, Sulaport Cutthroat, Warren Instigator, Avenger of Zendikar are the five cards. Uh, kind of like nice full art border extensions i guess with different art uh 29.99 or 39.99 for foil or non-foil any thoughts on our newest secret layer drop i only want the royal elemental like that's it i i, I don't know i mean i i feel like if they had a pick from zendikar there's a lot of cards there that they could have picked over this like because they're going through every zendikar right like we're talking about zendikar and then battle for zendikar right i don't yeah. know like Aren't there cooler cards than, than like, some of this? Like, if, like Zulaport Cutthroat, like, I, I think that's probably the most, like, most sought-after card out of this whole thing. Yeah, Avenger I mean, Zendikar is kind of cool, but, like, you know, we, we, we have enough of that, right? I mean... Avenger is, like, a good card and a playable card, but it has been reprinted a lot of times. Like, so there's plenty of them floating around. Uh, Royal Elemental, I didn't realize, is, like, a $10 card now. I remember that, like, being a bulk rare for a long time, but Commander, I guess, EDH. and the demand from that, it's up to, to $10. And the same with, like, uh, Admonition Angel is also now up to something, thanks to Landfall shenanigans. So, I don't know. I mean, it's fine. It looks like a decent secret lair. Mm, I think I'm a little disappointed, just because with Theros Beyond Death, they had, like, that massive all 15 of the gods, five drop set, get them all together if you want to. So I was kind of expecting something more, I guess. I thought it was going to be something something more than this ended up being, but I think, like, it is a fine secret layer drop, and the value looks reasonable, and it has a lot of good commander stuff. I, I think people, I, I think what people really wanted from this was all the fetch lands put together. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like an Ulamog or something, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people thought Eldrazi Titans they were going for. Aww. I also would have loved to see, like, uh, an Amiria Valica, like, that land cycle. Like, I think that would be a cool secret layer drop. Like, some of the lesser ones, like Magosi the Water Veil is pretty bad, but I think I would still be down with that being a secret layer drop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, this this drop was, it's not like, yeah, like, it's not bad. I, I, I think that it's a little underwhelming, but, like, it's not the worst. It also has, like, I think for me, less interesting art than some of the other ones. Like uh, some of my favorite secret layers, like the tattoo one or some of the weird like yeah, cartoon yeah. art themes, like the real unique art, the art on this, it's good, but there isn't any like, I don't know, real like specific theme or flavor to it. Like we've seen with some of the other ones. Well, the shtick yeah. is it's the, the landfall frame from the newest set, right? That's the whole point uh... of these. And, you know, they're going to save, Al- they're not going to put Eldrazi because I think they're trying to erase Eldrazi from <laughs> Zendikar's history, right? They, they're they're going to save it for like an actual Eldrazi secret lair. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think what, these are fine. What about like a like a an Eldrazi monument? I mean, you could even just as a monument to like pay respects <laughs> to the Eldrazi, <laughs> the spaghetti monsters of the format. I, I feel we'll have like a super like the next Eldrazi set we have. We'll get like an Eldrazi secret layer, and in which case you'll get all your Eldrazi goodies there. So I think outside of like Ameria and things like that, I think. This is just like a playable card from each color that was from Zendikar. I'm like, okay, I guess. Well, where where's Archive Trap? Mm. <laughs> I mean, why can't we have that? That card is cool. <sighs> yeah, Archive Trap could use a reprinting. I always forget how expensive that is now. So we, we could use more of those, especially since people are going to try to build mill decks now, thanks to Zendikar Rising. Yes, speaking, yes they are. Speaking of Zendikar Rising... We, we've kind of run long already, but Richard, guide us through as many cards as we can get through before a fish mail. Uh, we still have some cool stuff we haven't talked about. Let's get to it. All right. The whole set comes out this Thursday on Arena. Who knows when it comes out on paper? <laughs> like two weeks later? I don't I don't know when the, the paper release, I think, I think it's the 25th. So like a week yeah. after it's a, Thursday. It's a week, yeah. Yeah. Uh, week. But Thursday, we'll be able to play on Arena. Uh, so they released the whole set already, so you can check it out, mtgpreviews.com. We'll go over some cards that we missed last time. Uh, so first up, Agadim's Awakening slash Agadim the Undercrypt. So it's a MDFC, black, black, black X. Sorcery, return from your graveyard to the battlefield. Any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less. Sorcery, flip side, is a land... Uh, that you can pay three life to have it enter untapped adds a black. Uh, I, I love this card. I think this card is really good. Yeah, I think this might be the second best or possibly even the best of the MDFC Mythics uh, for older formats. Like, I think this one has a decent shot to show up in modern. Uh, I think this is just, I mean, the whole cycle is really, really strong for formats like Standard and Historic and Pioneer. But I think this one can show up in like Death Shadow decks. I was wondering, Richard... Would you play this this in Jund? Like, uh, I'm picturing, okay, so it's a land, and come into play untapped, you can, like, pay, I don't know, three mana and get back, like, a Bob and a Fulminator Mage or something. I guess you're missing one drops, which is awkward. Like, that, if you had one drops in the deck, it would probably be more valuable. Any chance it shows up in decks like that? I think we try it. The problem is, like... You don't have that many land slots, right? So if you're playing Ren in six, you you have to play like the site uh the the lands that draw cards. Uh, you need basics to not get Blood Mooned. So like, where do you stick this in? And then you actually need to make it to five mana to get any use out of it. And at five mana, you're probably already dead already if you haven't won the game. So I don't know, uh, but I'm sure we'll try it. Uh, I I think this is actually one of the this is the best one. I don't. Which one is better than this? This has to be the best. It's like so much value. Yeah. For I think the green one's the best for literally modern. nothing. Just because uh, oh, of yes, Primeval yes. Titan synergies, but But for like all like a generic all purpose deck, like just any mid rangey deck that plays creatures will will play this. It might be worth it, like in rock style decks. Uh, you know, not Jun, because you don't need the red for anything. In rock style decks you could play this in modern. Um but I'm sure it'll be tested a lot. It seems the Bolt Land is uh, actually an upside for Death Shadow, right? They'll, they'll just play this, and uh, you can get back Death Shadow, which is actually really good for four mana. So I, I think we will see this everywhere, uh, and I think it will terrorize Standard as well. Like, card advantage, Krim? What card advantage, right? Like, all your cards get, like, five <laughs> cards. Like, does it really matter, <laughs> right? That's that's card advantage. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone has card advantage, no one has card advantage. <laughs> yeah. Unless you have slightly more card advantage. Speaking of Death Shadow, we have Scourge of the Skyclaves. One in a black, creature, demon, it's a mythic, kicker, four in a black. When you cast a spell, if it was kicked, each player loses half of their life, round it up. Scourge of the Skyclaves' power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. This is such a cool card. I mean, like... I, I, I think this is such a sweet card, and, like, I, I, you know, like, since it's spoiling, I've read online about some crazy interactions, like, you know, with with the whole, like, Eldrazi and, like, you know, Nethroi and, and all of this stuff. Like, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this in EDH. 
uh, or at least very cool interactions. Kind of a lot of hoops to jump through. But uh, in in like constructed, this could also be kind of interesting, right? I mean, it, it's just a hard, like it just immediately have some like everybody's health. That could be pretty cool. That's like and it's only two mana. That's, no, seven mana. If it's, well, yep, to, have have it, out, right. to have yeah. everyone, to yeah. have everyone, yeah. The first time it, it would be like seven mana. I like it. I think it's an interesting card. I don't know how how good it'll be yet. I mean, I I can't get a read on this card. It's so it's unique. That's for sure. It's yeah, a, it's a tough one to figure out. I tend to lean towards it being good in modern as like kind of a weird death shadow. I feel like you already can lose your uh, lose your own life total pretty easily in modern. We see death shadow do that like super well. The only thing you really need to add is like some lightning bolts or something to deal with your opponent's life total. And uh, even your opponents are most likely fetching and shocking and losing some amount of life. So I feel like it definitely has modern potential. I'm a lot more skeptical in standard where I feel like you're just setting yourself to get like Uro out of the game. You're going to cast this and your opponent's going to be like Uro and then escape Uro, gain six, and then your Scourge dies. Uh, I do think the shenanigans you mentioned are really sweet. Like the, the trick is, or the main trick I've seen is the star, star power and toughness works in every zone. So if you can get this in your graveyard, let's say in commander, and let's say uh, you're at 40 life, this is actually going to be a negative 20, negative 20. And that means if you Netheroy, <laughs> you act, this actually is giving you 20 more power worth of creatures that you can reanimate because it's actually going to minus 20 off of its converted mana cost, which are off of its power, which is really, really sweet. That's such a crazy interaction. I'm just like, I wouldn't even think of that. And that's so <laughs> cool. Uh, so modern, I don't think this is playable. Like, you already have Death Shadow. Like, what do you need this, like, harder Death Shadow for, right? Like, I don't think the deck is needing more death shadows between like traverse range of eos things like that like i don't think you need any more death shadows i'm actually curious if this will actually work in standard uh you could like you need to get a hidden so your opponent as like say 17 or something then this is playable because you have all of the bolt lands like you can try to actually death shadow yourself with all the bolt lands in standard so i wonder if you can get anywhere with this I wonder if you can get like a two mana six six or something, if that's even worth it with all the hoops you have to jump through. So curious. Like, can you actually make Death Shadow in standard? Do we have enough symmetrical uh like like you, you have the like your life total I think is fine, because you have the new removal spell, the enchantment removal that you can pay life, you have the bolt lands, you can get your life total down low. So you just need to aggro out your opponent slightly, and then you have like a two mana six six or something. Is that worth it's still just a 266 that dies to doom blade right so i'm just so. Uh, if it wasn't for uro being like one of the best cards or the best card in the format i think i'd be a little bit more exciting uh excited yeah. for it like that's yeah. my main concern like if uro didn't exist i would think this could have a, a decent chance to be good in standard but because of uro i just feel like you're you're setting yourself up to have this die <laughs> to not even not even die to do blade, die to Uro gaining life essentially. Uh, Uro be a kill spell and uh, <laughs> like, everything else. Yes, like Uro needs to be better. I do think in Commander it might have more potential than we gave it credit for because it should combo with things that like double up life loss, right? Like those cards that are like, uh, at your end step, each opponent loses life equal to life they lost this turn or something. That's just like a two card combo kill. Yeah. I am furiously searching for the next card. Hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Ancient of Green Warden. Four green green. Mythic creature elemental. Five seven. Reach. When uh, you may play land cards from your graveyard. If a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. Panharmonicon so it, it, for lands. Yeah. Landermonicon. Eh, this card is oh, like there. There's no cool ETB effects, right? That I can think of. Maybe like like the ones that I can think of are from Throne of Eldraine, so Mystic Sanctuary, uh, that kind of stuff. Richard's favorite blue card in modern. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, like yeah. I, is there anything else? So I think the main purpose I see for this is using it with landfall. So right. I think. I think that's that's where you go. I think as far as lands themselves, you're right. There's not very many exciting ETB triggers on lands. But if you have this out uh, and you play a land, 
uh, you're getting double the mana with Lotus Cobra, let's say, or double the attack steps with Morag, or whatever landfall trigger you want to be doubling up, is that going to be like, or doubling up your Omnath, like, is that going to be competitive and top tier standard playable? I would probably be surprised. I do think there's some cool, like, jank combos. Some people have been sending me deck lists where you, like, play this with Lotus Cobra and then sack all your lands to Nihiri's Lithiforming, and they come into play untapped, but you're getting two mana for each land that comes in since you have Lotus Cobra in this, and then you use that mana to keep, like, chaining stuff off. So there might be something like that. I think this is probably a really sweet commander card, though. Like, playing oh, lands yeah. from your graveyard's really good, and then you also open up whatever, like, two beasts with Rampaging Bait Loss, or double up your Elementals with your big Omnath or whatever. So I think there are things you can do with it, but yeah, it is very narrow. More narrow than I even realized until I started to search for like cool things to do with it. And I was like, oh, this is actually, there's actually not that many lands that work with a Banner Monicon effect. <laughs> feel of the Dead. Is Feel of the Dead oh, legal no. in any format? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it blocks, it blocks a Titan. It's a 5 7. <laughs> It doesn't kill a titan, it, it, but it blocks a titan. <laughs> I think they're more than willing to attack into this. <laughs> with <an arrow. laughs> and it's got sneaky reach, too. I definitely will attack my flyers. I assume every 100%. big green creature has reach nowadays. You'll never get me with that ever again. <laughs> it's the red creatures though, with reach that get you now. <laughs> even tiny green creatures have reach. Arboreal grazing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has reach. Uh, all right. Myriad Construct. Four generic mana, four, four, artifact, creature, construct. It's a rare kicker three. If Myriad Construct was kicked, it enters a battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control. When Myriad Construct becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it and create a number of one, one colorless construct. Artifact creature tokens equal to its power. This is one of my favorite cards from the whole set. I really like this card. So in Commander, it's going to be ridiculously big for seven mana. Like you kick this on turn seven even. Most lands in Commander are non-basic. So each of your opponent has five non-basics, let's say. This is going to be, what, a 1919 for seven or something? That, if it gets targeted, is going to make 19 one ones, like Hanger Back Walker style. So I think the card is really sweet. The other thing I love about this card is it's worded in a slightly weird way where the token production is not dependent on the sacrifice clause. So what you could do with this is like, replicate or other things that can target multiple times like let's say you play this on turn four turn five you replicate a shattering spree or giga drows five times targeting it you're gonna get tokens for each of those copies even though it sacrifices one so that's theoretically like 20 tokens or something so there's some really cool shenanigans with this card huh Hmm. how can you break that hmm just imagine like weird storm. all skull clamping that can be done here. <laughs> oh, so oh no, so many cards will be drawn. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Giga drowsing this thing would be crazy. And then, well, you, when you when you also you also just have one ones, and then you get Rakdos charmed or something. What what, what is <laughs> yeah. a quick way to like you have a peripherals on the battlefield? Like, what's a quick way to kill someone by doing this? Probably Perforos. Yeah, I mean, something like Perforos. Perforos is like probably a good start. A bushwhacker. Yeah. Like if you make 21 ones and cast a bushwhacker, you'd get them. I like it. I like the art. We, we never have constructs that look like constructs. We always have these this, really this, beefy looking things, right? I'm like, oh, yes, this thing. <laughs> it's, not, it's a big robot, but it doesn't look too intimidating. I'll take it. Then it turns into like a million one ones. <laughs> this, this looks like a, an older... Ani- like like an anime called Dot Hack, and they're like one of the main villains. Oh so, my god! Dot uh, Hack. Called- <laughs> yep, yep. Like it's Skeeth, I think it was the the villain's name, and uh, it's from the old games too, and uh, looks just like that. Or it also looks like a a a Gundam crossover with like a Hedron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, last card. We have the Goldfish Preview card, Lithoform Engine. Four generic mana, legendary artifact, mythic, two to and tap, copy, target, activated, or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Three and tap, copy, target, instant, or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets. Four and tap, copy, target, permanent spell you control. That copy becomes a token. I, I think we can just all unanimous, like, just all agree that this is going to be really good in EDH, right? Like, that, like yeah, it's it looks really good in EDH. I, I, I think... 
I think that constructed wise, like I mean, like like standard and whatnot. I don't know. I mean, like didn't I guess like mirror pool was a one off, so that didn't work. But like a lot of these kind of cards that do this copying stuff never sees a ton of con- like like standard play and all that because they don't do anything on their own. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually, I think this is probably the best EDH card from the set, or one of them. It's on the short list, so it's going to be an all-star. It's literally, like, several EDH staples uh, stapled together, more or less. So I think it's definitely one of the best EDH cards. In other formats, like Standard, I'm definitely going to try it. Whether or not it's good, uh, that remains to be seen. I do think that that last ability, that's the ability that intrigues me, just because it's new. Being able to copy any permanent spell, artifact, enchantment, planeswalker, like, obviously you got to deal with legend rule issues, but I feel like that's actually a pretty powerful ability, especially since we still do have a lot of ramp. So getting up enough mana where you can, like, play a four drop and copy it and then do that essentially every turn i feel like that could do really cool things is that going to be like top tier competitive things almost certainly not but this is one of the cards i'm most excited to build decks around because i think you do some really sweet things with it i i mean like yeah like you definitely can do some sweet things with it but you know like it's 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 like like i, I don't know like it, it's it's four mana to activate the 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 copy of permanent right yeah. And you only get to do it once. Of course, I know that that's, uh, like, where it balances itself out, like, as opposed to just pay for and copy it every time you pay for. Uh, but, but I, I don't know, just like this kind of stuff in, in standard and historic and whatnot, even with that, how powerful that could be, I, I feel like there's just something better. Cause first off, it does nothing when you play it. So, but, but like, can you do fun stuff with it? Definitely. Yeah, it needs to be like an I win the game combo if you're going to play it on turn four or something and then like turn five try to win in like standard or historic or something like that. So I don't think it's happening. Like we very rarely see these kind of cards work out in constructed. EDH, I think it's too good. Like, I don't know. I don't really like this card. Like it's like almost an auto include in like a lot of decks, which... Like it does too much. Like I, like I, I don't know. You can just copy literally anything, right? Like you just have to use it like as you're casting the spell. So like you can copy creatures, you can copy enchantments, like whatever, right? So I don't know. It seems weird to me. It seems it has like too much on it. It reminds me of like um, planeswalkers that have like literally every ability on them, right? You're just like it's just it's too much, right? <laughs> like where's the deck? design choice or something right so i don't know we'll see how it plays out it is really expensive so it is really slow but if you resolve this thing like everyone's gonna gun for it so that's how powerful it is so i I don't know maybe it's fine but yeah just copy literally anything you want no like there's no restrictions right it's just you just pay a little more mana depending on what you want to copy yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Uh, the one thing I want to say is we got this wrong in the preview video because they didn't have a hand announce the rules yet. But the copy it makes, even though it's a token, does not count as creating a token. So it does not work with doubling seasons, anointed processions. Uh, I assumed it did, but they actually like intentionally wrote the the rule in a way or had to write the rule in a way that that doesn't work. So just fair warning because I know we talked about that synergy during spoiler season. All right. Uh, should we move on to fish mail? Fish mail is Richard. Seems good. All right. If you have questions, send them to at goldfish with the hashtag mggfishmail, and we'll get to your questions on air. First question, Eco CD. Can a format have so many decisions that it isn't fun? Between sequencing flip duels and deciding to play spell lands or spells or lands, it could take two minutes just to figure out what to do in turn one. Deck building decisions are also intimidating. Ooh, I think for some people, yes. I think that can... I think as someone who's played Magic for a long time, for me, I find that to be a positive. I like having all those decisions to make. But for someone who's newer to Magic, I could definitely see how having too much complexity could be a negative rather than a positive. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I yeah, I guess, like, it, it can be a little intimidating, right? Sometimes you do want to just be able to be like, hey, I'm going to play this card and it's just a 4-4 four, four and that's fun. But I mean, like, yeah, like Seth said, I love the complexity of it. Even if sometimes I get lost all in the complexity sometimes, uh, like random interactions here and there that, you know, you don't think about. Uh, but like, I really do like the deck building complexity that example Zendikar Rising is going to bring the double sided, uh, land cards. You know, I, I'm current, like as I'm making deck lists right now, like I am running into that issue. Like how am I running less lands or am I running more lands? Right. Like I, I, 
do I need more lands? Can I, I get, like, it feels weird looking at my deck list and seeing it say, like, 16 lands. But when really, I am playing, like, 25, 26. So, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's the balance between keeping, like, long-time players satisfied. Because I think the longer you play, the more you like this. Because it's just more play. Like, it's more things to do that you're not accustomed to. But as a new player, it can be overwhelming. It's like when you get a board game. And then to play the game, you have like a 30 page manual to read through. You're like, um, no, thank you. Give me like the, the quick start sheet with like six bullet points, right? <laughs> like, so I can understand like if you're just picking up magic, you're like, what the heck is going on? And it just feels bad. You play the wrong land. Five minutes later, you're like, oh, uh, I played the wrong land, right? So yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a balancing decision. Uh, but I think also, even as a new player, just the more you play, the more you get used to it. And then soon enough, it should come natural so hopefully it's fine but yeah it is like between mutate uh being like super complex and then with this thing now uh, it seems wizards is getting more and more complex hack boy what's your favorite example of a misevaluation of a card when it was initially spoiled do you guys personally find it more amusing when a card is underrated or overrated um i, I think my favorite misevaluation was probably this uh this card called oko thief of crowns um <laughs> The <laughs> I mean, we re like like we like even I thought that that card was powerful, and I still felt like I misevaluated how good that was. <laughs> it's hard to to pick any new card to be literally the best at what it was of all time. Like whenever you, it's it's hard to see a new planeswalker and be like, oh, that's the best planeswalker that we've ever had in like twenty whatever twenty five years of Magic, fifteen years of planeswalker. So understandable to miss on. I feel like for me, I find the the cards that are overrated more hilarious than uh, the ones that are underrated. Like uh, one of my favorites is. Oh no! I Aurelius Fury. Is it Aurelius? Fe it's not. Oh, Narset is a classic. Uh, just because we talked about it going down in value on the podcast for like six months straight, every week <laughs> it was like the top loser. That one cracked me up. Time. Oh, what is the the time? Uh, time. The time twister effect that was an M10 that was like a forty dollar card during spoiler season, and then it ended up being literally the cheapest mythic in the history of magic that was back during my collection buying time and it was like a 25 cent mythic i can't think of it it's just a five minute time twister but that was another one that i think was uh was a classic i, I, th I think my like the the best overrated card was i think aurelius fury for 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 me <laughs> i mean like i <laughs> there was like hype going into it i bought into it i saw i bought it <laughs> <laughs> And that, like that card was still cold unplayable. Like it was just like not. It had zero applications anywhere at all. I I, I like underrated cards. I I love going back to like MTG salvation threads and reading about how like Dark Confidant is unplayable or Tarmogoyf <laughs> is like going to be a one two at best or something. Right? It's just like. Wait. Hmm. <laughs> Do, how, how about how about when you read the Oko threads? I mean, this card's not that great. It just makes a food token. Like <laughs> name any card. Who cares? You get a beast time. within every turn. Nissa Oko companion. Hey, I, I knew I knew Nissa was good. I said that a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Mana know, doubling is good. You know how good it would be though. <laughs> would, would it be I mean, this level of good, right? Because I think we're I, all I like mean, ah, I, Oko's fine. Like Oko is a good card. It'll see play. But not like it will dominate every format back to like the oldest format in Magic Good. I, I, I think Oko was definitely underrated going into the new format because of exactly that, right? Like it's just a food token. You gain some life and yeah, sure, you can activate its second ability to make a 3-3, but you know, like cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but no one thought about like how problematic that was <laughs> and how it played in the food like engine. So how unkillable. It's loyalty. Yeah. Was. <laughs> uh, I, I, so, so yeah. So I, I look forward to revisiting this conversation in three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> to we'll, see we'll, what broken actually, cards no, 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 from Zendikar no. Rising <laughs> are there. We'll give it. We'll give it two weeks. We got to say like two, like a month, a full month, and then we'll revisit it. But like, I don't think. I don't know. I hope there isn't an Oko that slides by right now underneath our radar. I really hope there isn't. Uh, but like, you know. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at just like like the cards that we've 
underrated and overrated as magic has gone by. And we've been doing it since the beginning, like reading back to people with like Lion's Eye Diamond or Necro <laughs> back in okay, the right, 90s. Right, right. Like, Lion's Eye Diamond was trash when it was released. <laughs> you, you can't you can't like have a rules change and like eight sets later, the perfect card is printed with it to change uh, the evaluation. <laughs> I okay. was two years. I was like maybe three years old, so I don't even ne- know what that. I, I like <laughs> necro, necro. Then yeah, necro. Ne- necro Everyone was... thought it was trash, and then it was like the best card in one of the best cards in all of Magic. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's part of the fun. Like I, I don't know. Like people take this super seriously, right? Obviously, when not just us, but anyone evaluates a card, we're just doing it in a vacuum. We don't play tests. Like of course not, right? So we're just like ah, this. <laughs> And then something happens, and then we're like, yeah, well, if we played with the card for five minutes, you would instantly recognize how broken Oko is. But the fun <laughs> of it is you don't play with the card, and you just make meaningless <laughs> assertions about it, and then see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so, you so, yeah. say things like, Jace Friend's Prodigy is, you know, the worst Planeswalker of all time, things like oh, that. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> oh my gosh, did you that. say that, Seth? You did didn't, really didn't graduate college. Something or, very similar line? to that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you... <laughs> okay. Obviously, if you were telling me back then, I I would have I would have it would have seemed kind of bad because I mean I was a Jace fanboy and I still am. So, <laughs> uh, and like, but it was cut like no one believed me because that came out fresh off the heels of me saying Jace the Living Guild Pact was also like amazing <laughs> because my logic my logic at that point, which th- believe it or not, there was some logic, or I guess you could say the word logic loosely was used, was there has not been a bad Jace. That was it. That was my, that was my argument. Uh, they had not been a bad Jace. <laughs> and then Living Guild Pack proved that wrong. Yeah, I definitely had harsh words for Jace Friends Prodigy. I don't know if I said it was the worst Planeswalker of all time. I definitely said it was the worst of the Flipwalker cycle by a long ways. And yeah, it was the article. I think it was called Sending the Flipwalkers to College, if you want to look it up and relive my <laughs> my mispredictions <laughs> on the website. But, uh, but yes, and uh, Jace definitely got a failing grade. And I think that's my worst like spoiler miss of all time i've definitely had like plenty over the years because as richard said you just kind of like make your best guess and best arguments without playtesting them but boy jace is one that sticks out as uh, being my worst my worst miss you just need to make meme worthy statements <laughs> that, that they will live for, forever in internet infamy <laughs> All right, that's all the time we have for Fish Mill this week. Thank you to everyone who sent them in. If you have questions, send them to at MTGGoldfish with the hashtag MTGFishMail, and we'll get to your questions on air. And I believe that that brings us to the end of episode 294 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So, Richard Crimp, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show. We will be back next week to talk about whatever goes down in the world of magic. So until then, have a wonderful week, and this is the crew signing out. Bye.